Uh, one of the projects uh, I led was looking at the role of digoxin in reducing interstage mortality for infants with single ventricle. Uh, and in that study, using data from the Pediatric Heart Network single ventricle reconstruction trial, uh, we found that kids who went home on digoxin uh, compared to kids who were not on digoxin, um, that if you were not on digoxin, you had about three and a half times the likelihood of having interstage mortality or dying before six months of age before you could have your glen. And digoxin's a medicine that's been around for a long time. It's pretty cheap, it's easy to give, it's fairly safe. Uh, and so this suggests that we may have uh, another opportunity at our disposal to help improve um, the outcomes for kids with single ventricle heart disease. So there's a group called the National Pediatric Cardiology Quality Improvement Collaborative. And this is a group um, that consists of centers from around the country who are following these kids because, yes, it is a very important um, time period and question to parents. This group includes a lot of parents uh, and community members as part of, part of their cohort. And they had found this kind of um, possibility in some early studies that they had done, but many people in the field, including myself, were still very skeptical. Um, digoxin has been around for quite a while. It's not a new drug. And so if it really makes a difference, then why haven't we found this before? So that's why we got the idea of let's go and look um, using a more robust and validated data set uh, from some older data and see whether this finding was still kind of lurking inside there that no one had looked at. And that's what we did. And so that's what we were able to find that just giving the simple medicine may actually have a very important benefit um, in survival for these kids. So we're talking mainly about single ventricle heart disease and predominantly hypoplastic left heart syndrome. So uh, most of these kids can be picked up through the antenatal ultrasound. So upwards about 70, 90% of kids can be diagnosed early um, if they have hypoplastic heart syndrome. Um, yet still our, our treatment options, we don't have any, uh, we have surgeries that can help palliate the disease, but it's not a disease that we can fix. So these kids are very uh, high risk for having complications. Um, so having something like this can help improve um, their outcomes. So for hypoplastic left heart syndrome, they have their first surgery in the first couple of weeks of life. Um, that allows them to survive for a bit. At around four to six months of age, they have a second surgery called the Glenn procedure. Uh, and then usually sometime between about two to seven years of age, depending on the child and the institution, they'll have a third procedure, which is the Fontan. And basically all that those procedures do is there are a series of, of procedures that rearrange the plumbing, so to speak. Um, these kids are only born with one ventricle and a normal heart, there are two. So we're trying to make half a heart do the work of a whole heart. Uh, and another big area for these kids though is their longer term outcomes and what matters and what happens to them longer term because as I said, we're not repairing them, we're not fixing them, we're just allowing them to survive. Um, and longer term, they may have other complications and problems down the road. No, it's not a cure, certainly not a fix, but that, that first few months is the most critical period when kids uh, are at risk for um, for dying, and this medicine that we found can help um, improve their survival. If not used properly and not observed, there can be safety concerns, so it does warrant some monitoring with it. But in our study, we looked at whether kids who were on this medicine versus others were having differing rates of complications. And you know, comparing the 200 kids on the meds to the 100 not on it, we did not see any difference in complications in that large group.